It is estimated that globally there are over 400,000 snake bites and at least 20,000 deaths each year. But many snake bites go unreported, so those numbers could also be as high as 1.8 million bites and 95,000 deaths each year. In the U.S., rattlesnakes and coral snakes are highly venomous, and Sub-Saharan Africa has 10 of the deadliest snakes in the world. Antivenom can save lives, but as of right now, we've run out of some types of antivenom. And not just here in the U.S., but around the world. It's a global health concern that doesn't seem to have a solution. Inside Science I think the big deal about antivenoms and shortages in the world right now is that drug companies that make any kind of pharmaceutical product only make it if it's profitable. And the problem with antivenoms is they tend to be fairly expensive to produce. Expensive to produce and not enough demand. So little, in fact, that the pharmaceutical company that produced antivenom products stopped making them in 2003. The FDA stepped in and extended the expiration dates of the last remaining supplies to last until June 2016. Richard Clark at UC San Diego Health says it will likely last even longer. So there's still expired antivenom around that we know still works. One day, that'll be gone unless a company starts to make the coral snake antivenom again. So in the United States, if not many people are bitten by coral snakes every year, the company can't sell enough antivenom to at least break even, they're not going to make the antivenom. Another company is not going to come in out of the goodness of their heart and provide coral snake antivenom in the United States unless they can make a profit doing that. Coral snake antivenom is not the only one running out. Another antidote, called Fav Afric, used by Doctors Without Borders to treat snake bites in Africa, is now no longer being produced by the pharmaceutical company Sanofi Pasture. A lot of people get bitten by snakes in Africa, and they get bitten by very poisonous snakes like cobras and mambas and stuff that will kill you very rapidly. So it's a very much of a public health concern. The African antivenom is especially useful because it can treat bites from 10 different venomous snakes found in Africa. There are cheaper antivenom alternatives, but they don't always work well and aren't specific to different snake bites. They're riskier as far as side effects are concerned. They may not bind the snake venom as well as the more well-made antivenoms, but if it's all you got, it's better in some situations than nothing. Snake antivenoms are made by first milking venom from a snake. The venom is then diluted, and injected into usually horses. They're large, friendly, and easy to work with. The horse will produce antibodies against the venom, which are taken from the horse's blood and processed for humans in the form of antivenom. It's a process that companies no longer want to invest the money to do. So right now, only cheaper alternatives are available in places like Sub-Saharan Africa. From a public health perspective, and believe me, there's no body that is more concerned about public health than I am, um, I, I definitely think that if I could have any venoms available, that they should be. And if the federal government is willing to take on that priority, even if people can't pay for it, I think that would be great for them to do. For U.S. snake bite patients, the chance of encountering a coral snake is so rare that for right now, there is antivenom. And when it runs out completely, doctors still have effective treatments. As an example, in the United States, if you were bitten by a rattlesnake and you came in and I didn't have any venom to treat you with, I could still treat you in an intensive care unit with things like blood products and supportive care that would likely keep you alive until the venom had run its course through your body. But in places like Sub-Saharan Africa, where finding a medical facility is hard enough, and then to be told there is no antivenom left, means people will continue to die and lose limbs. This is Inside Science. Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.